Okay, so this is the second video. I'm going to be testing out Cursor AI or coding in Cursor AI. Honestly, I just, I never thought I would say this. I've been coding for almost 10 years now, which is kind of wild to say. Professionally for going on eight years, but yeah, 10 years just tinkering around as well, which is wild. And throughout my entire career, other than when I was developing with PHP, I have been using VS Code. So the fact that we, I just gravitate towards Cursor is pretty wild in my opinion. I really love it. I think it's super user friendly. And I believe Cursor AI is either part of VS Code or uses the same, I mean, it looks like VS Code almost. Let me check that out and then I'll put up on screen here the actual fact if it's part of VS Code or where that relationship lies. Today, we are going to build such a fun project. I love building computer vision uh, projects because I am a visual person. So seeing it come to life is what really got me interested in code in the first place. So it's it makes it fun again. I feel like a kid in the best way possible building this stuff because it's exciting and fun and visual. And you're also learning a ton about, you know, uh, computer vision and then in turn a little bit about artificial intelligence and you know, different capacity. All right, so in Cursor AI, there are a few things I wanna highlight. First is a package, I'm just plant my notes here, just to be specific, you know, that we are going to be using. So NumPy we've used before in the past. It's really essentially a way to do mathematical equations for us. That is, it's a no brainer, it's great. I love it, what is this? This is cool, I didn't know this. If you hover over the packages, it gives you an example about that. That's really cool, fast mathematical operations over arrays. Now what about this one, so do this, pillow. Um, well, kind of, it gives a little bit. This is the one I really wanted to dive into, which is pillow. So pillow or pill is the Python imaging library, hence pill. But there's some notes I made about it as well, because this is something, I haven't played around with this package too much, and it's really cool. It's, well, I've used it a little bit in the past, but not, I never really understood what it did, if that makes sense. And that is key when you are building. So what does Pill do? Uh, it is an image opening and saving, so it can read and write many different images formats like JPEG, PNG, the list goes on. Uh, image processing, so it provides tools for resizing, rotating, filtering, and applying various transformations to image. So not only can it open, uh, read and write with images in different formats, it can also transform them, which is pretty cool. And this is a really cool thing too. It also will allow you to draw shapes, lines, and text on images, which is super helpful for different things around computer vision. The last thing I'll say is it also will enhance your images. So that's pretty cool. It will adjust for brightness, color, tones, different things like that. So it's a very powerful package, if you will. And it's something that I've used on and off, but I've never really looked into further as to what it does, like what it's capable of. So I wanted to share that with you because I feel like we're at a point with coding right now, it's not going anywhere. If anything, it's going to be more in demand because as everyone is able to build products or many people, I shouldn't say everyone, but many people are able to build different products. What will happen is people will be using these AI tools at the top, building these you know, products on a small scale. Obviously, large corporations are not going to be using AI to generate their code yet anyways. But what will happen is developers will need to be really, really fine-tuned experts that understand what is actually happening, what the code means, where it is being created, why it's being created that way. It's, I think if anything, the more AI tools that come out that can build different code aspects, the more developers are going to be in demand as long as you are specialized. And to be specialized, you need to understand the why behind everything we are building. I just wanted to share that with you because there's been a lot of talk Every time there's a new AI tool, it's always talk around, oh, is coding gonna take over programmers or developers, and that's my two cents. All right, now let's get into what exactly this code is doing. So let's start with the overlay image. So this is really interesting. For this, I got quite a bit of help. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you, be very candid with you, the parts that I got help with from AI and the parts I did on my own. The overlay image part, I got help with AI. I do not understand, to take that back a step, I do not understand, meaning I am not an expert when it comes to overlaying images and understanding. Now these are all different. Let me see if I can zoom in here. These are all different um, machine learning, I believe, like using, what is, I think it's using aspects from a different model. Let me see, give me a sec here. Let's see what I'm gonna do. Um, is this the location for different data or what is this doing? Cause I feel like I'm not explaining it properly but I believe it's like the location for different data. My machine learning class, I don't need any more coffee, that's for sure. Uh, that is something we were doing, but let's see, maybe it's different. No, it's a little bit different. 
It looks similar. So this line extracts a portion of the main image where the overlay will be placed. Okay, so that makes sense. So basically what they are doing is taking the image, because I have on my left side here, glasses one to four, taking a portion of that and deciding where it will be placed on the face, which is pretty cool. Then if we go down here, this was really simple. It's just load glasses. So we're passing in the file name and then loading an image of the file and convert it to a format that is suitable for the overlay. So yes, load glasses image was pretty straightforward as well as rank glasses for oval face. So I picked oval face. I don't know. Do I have an oval face? I feel like, I feel like maybe it's square. I don't know what shape it is, but I put oval because I thought that at the time and then now I'm kind of second guessing my entire life. I don't know. So anyways, uh, what happened is based on my face ratio, so face width, width divided by height, glasses ratio, it actually is generating a score on the glasses shape based on my face shape, which is really cool. And I thought it was a fun way to bring some you know, something else into it and uh, see what the score was. Like, what is the computer going to rank my face with these glasses? So this was really fun. I got some help here where there's ever there's comments like this. It typically is generated by AI because I don't comment my code like that when I'm just making it for myself. So that's important to know too. But it was very easy to understand once we went through it. So score based on how close the glasses width is to the face and then how well the glasses complement the face. So it's pretty cool what you can do in really just a few lines of code. I wanted to create a sidebar, that's what this is here. And this is because I wanted to select the glasses on the side versus I initially had that you had to press a key and it would take put on a different pair of glasses, but I wanted that you could see what other glasses are coming up. And then we scroll down a little bit to the main function here and we get more into try glass, glasses try on app and it will stay running until you hit, let me scroll down here. Uh, Q, yeah, Q. And then if N, this will take you through the different glasses. So that's very straightforward as well. Now these calculations I use the help of Cursor AI with as well, which is really drawing semi, helping draw backgrounds for what the current glasses are and displaying the score with a larger font because I felt it was too small. So pretty straightforward. A little bit of AI was used throughout building this, which is really fun because it was a way to use tools that are coming out, but then also to actually understand what this code is doing. It's very simple, very straightforward, other than a few calculations. That was important to me. This is really fun because, you know, back, back in the old day, I hate saying that, but back before we used all these AI tools, I would often have these really fun ideas of things I wanted to build, but I would get stuck along the way or, didn't have anyone to ask because you know, you're just building something for fun on the side. And now using these different tools such as Cursor AI's built-in AI feature, which is literally just models from uh, ChatGPT or Claude. So it's not like it's any new technology in that aspect, but now with that, what we are able to do is pretty cool because you can build bigger projects than you ever thought possible as well. All right, let's run this. I'm so excited. I don't know why I'm so excited for this, but I really am. Okay, run Python. Sometimes when I'm using, I'm using QuickTime Player to record my screen right now, and sometimes when I use that, it doesn't let me run uh, or open up my uh, camera. So let's see if it does, or if I have to do it a different way here. <gasps> we did it. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting! Okay, oh, Jack's, Jack Nicholson is getting glasses as well. It's detecting his face. Let's try and reorient this. Okay, okay, so. First pair. I like these, it's only giving me an 8.8. I don't know, what do you think, okay? 9.2 for these? Are these better than these? Maybe they are, let's do like this. Um, I guess so, I don't know, I kind of, no, these are kind of nerdy, but I like them. Okay, let's keep on going. Nine, no, 9.7 for these, no, I don't think so. I mean, they're kind of fun though, but they're very small. Okay, and these are 9.1. No, I would rank it, this to be number one, number two, three, and then these are terrible. It's like, I got like these tiny little eyes. I don't know, what do you think? This is so fun though. In all seriousness, this was a really fun project to build. And I mean, look how quick it was. I should add more glasses. All right, 
that is to this week's project or today's project. I'll link the GitHub down below as well so you can go build. I'd love for you to add on to it. We can make it a community project, see what else we can add, we can create or do with it. But until then, I will see you in the next video. Hit that subscribe button. I thank you all for your support. I, I really love making these videos. It just brings a lot of joy and happiness to my life and I hope it does to yours as well. Bye everyone.